Secretary Kerry also said today that he believes President Obama will address the nation on Syria in the next few days. Now, for more on the White House perspective, Tony Blinken is President Obama's national deputy national security advisor. I spoke with him a short time ago. Tony Blinken, thank you very much for joining us. Let me just start by asking if you think the administration will have the votes it needs in Congress to take military action. Uh, Judy, I do. Um, look what we've seen over the last couple of days. Yesterday, uh, we saw the emergence of strong bipartisan support uh, for this authorization. We had uh, Speaker Boehner. Uh, we had uh, Leader Cantor, uh, Leader Pelosi in the House. We have a strong uh, bipartisan group in the Senate, uh, including the leaders of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, um, Senator Menendez and Senator Corker. And then just today, uh, we have the uh, passage in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, of a resolution authorizing uh, the use of force. So the momentum is there, uh, and I think we're heading in, uh, in exactly that direction. Tony, in an interview with the News Hour last week, the president said the main point of any military strike would be to punish and deter the Assad regime. Now, though, we hear Senators McCain and Graham saying in their conversation with the president, he's talking about degrading the capabilities of the Assad regime. That's going a step farther, isn't it? What does that mean, to degrade? So, Judy, there are two things going on here that are important to understand. First, with regard to uh, the underlying conflict in Syria. There's been a civil war going on, as you know, and we've been working very hard to end that war, and we think the best way to do it is through a negotiated transition that moves Assad out uh, through a political process. In order to do that, we've got to get him to the negotiating table, and that involves, in part, putting the pressure on him, isolating him, and building up uh, the opposition, which we've been doing uh, over the uh, in recent months, uh, as well as having a diplomatic track. And there, uh, we will be, uh, I think, uh, doing more uh, to support the opposition uh, as they uh, try and uh, convince Assad that he needs to negotiate an end to this. Within that, we have this terrible chemical weapons attack of August 21st. And we believe that it's imperative that we respond to that because there's been a norm against the use of chemical weapons for nearly 100 years. If we allow this to go unchecked, Assad will continue to do it with impunity. Other countries around the world and in the region who have weapons of mass destruction or seek to acquire them will conclude that they can use them with impunity. So the action that, we've, uh, that we're proposing uh, would be focused on the chemical weapons and making sure that Assad is deterred from using them again and that his ability to use them again is degraded. And that's what this is focused on. Now, it's also true that in any action we take, Assad is very likely to conclude that things he holds dear are at risk. And in that sense, he's likely to have a greater incentive to want to negotiate an end to this underlying conflict. So, in other words, in addition to punishing, uh, you want to weaken the Assad regime, make it easier for the opposition uh, to take over the government. So, the focus of this military effort that we're proposing is limited and focused on his uh, chemical weapons capability, and it's to deter him, to, to tell him, don't do it again, but it's also to make it a lot harder for him to do it again if he mistake, makes the mistake of trying to do it again. But in that context, um, he's also going to learn that things that are important to him uh, militarily are, are at risk, and that uh, can have the effect of convincing him that he needs to negotiate an end to the underlying conflict as well. Well, in terms of helping the rebels, we know there was a very prominent news report yesterday that help had, or military lethal aid had not yet reached the opposition. Now we're hearing that it may be close to reaching the opposition. Can you tell us whether it has or at this point, and if not, is it about to? So, Judy, uh, a number of countries have been providing uh, uh, assistance to the opposition. Uh, including the United States. And some months ago, you'll recall that when our intelligence community uh, concluded initially that um, Assad had been using, uh, on a small scale, chemical weapons uh, over the past year, uh, the president said uh, that we would be increasing our support to the opposition. And we've spent uh, some time putting in place an effort to do just that. And what I can tell you now, without detailing uh, any of the support, uh, is that uh, we have moved out on that. So lethal aid has reached the opposition, is reaching it now? So, Judy, what I can say is, without detailing the kind of assistance we're providing, is that we have significantly increased the assistance that is getting to the opposition. 
How long do you think any campaign uh, strike against the Assad regime will take? Uh, the reason I asked Tony Blinken is that we know in, in striking Kosovo, uh, you know, many years ago, uh, the, uh, the Clinton administration spoke about it lasting a few days. It went on for something like 72 days. How, once something like this gets started, how do you know you can put an end to it? Judy, it's really important that uh, people understand what this is and what this isn't. And it's understandable that people have concerns about this being some kind of uh, open-ended uh, potential action. It is not. Uh, the reason people tend to uh, have that as an initial reaction is they are looking at this through the frame of the last decade, a war in Iraq, a war in Afghanistan, hundreds of thousands of American troops committed. Well, what this is is a very targeted, very focused, time-limited action uh, to deter uh, Assad from using chemical weapons again and to make it harder for him to do so. What it is not is uh, open-ended. It is not boots on the ground. It is not Iraq. It is not Afghanistan. It's not Kosovo. It's not even Libya. I can't put, be any more precise than that, but it is a very limited, targeted action, but an effective one uh, to deal with the use of chemical weapons. And is the administration prepared for unintended consequences? The Syrian foreign minister is saying today there's no way of knowing what will be the repercussions of a U.S. strike. He talks about Syria striking back at Turkey, at Israel, and at Lebanon if the U.S. hits his country. We are very well prepared. Uh, we know that any action uh, has risks. Uh, any action can have unintended consequences. We do a lot of work to um, make sure we anticipate what those might be and to take steps to mitigate them. But we also believe fundamentally that not acting would have far greater and far graver consequences if we don't act to enforce a norm against the use of chemical weapons that's been around for nearly 100 years that our Congress has gotten strongly behind uh, over the last decade. If we don't do that, Assad will conclude that he can use these weapons again with impunity. Other countries in the region and beyond who have such weapons or aspire to get them will also conclude that they can acquire them and use them with impunity. That would do terrible damage to our security and to the security of countries around the world. So there are always dangerous dangers in acting. We work to mitigate them. There are far greater dangers in not acting. Final question about Egypt. There's an Associated Press report this afternoon that the administration uh, top national security advisors to the president are recommending that he cut off aid to uh, the Egyptian military. Hundreds of millions of dollars in retaliation for uh, the removal of the Morsi presidency. Uh, is that the case? Is that what you and others are recommending to the president? So, Judy, um, we know that uh, after uh, what happened uh, in Egypt, as the president has said, it's not going to be uh, business as usual. And in the wake of the violence that we saw uh, after uh, Morsi was uh, pushed out of power, uh, we uh, suspended the delivery of F-16s. We suspended a major military exercise. And uh, the rest of our assistance uh, is under review. Uh, we also have a strong incentive uh, to encourage the Egyptians to get on a democratic track, to have an inclusive process that brings an inclusive government uh, into, into power, and we're working with them on that. Uh, and beyond that, at this point, all I can tell you is we look at this uh, on a regular basis, and we've already taken steps to suspend some of our assistance. Tony Blinken, who is the Deputy National Security Advisor to President Obama, thank you. Thanks for having me, Judy.